nervous? Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Ryan here at Propelio. Today, we got two special guests in from San Antonio. Uh, we've got Logan Fuller and his lovely fiance, Miss Lissette. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce <laughs> her last name because what is it? Sarasua. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Anyway, what we're going to be talking today is is uh, you know success, failure. You know, having murder in in one of your rentals. That's always kind of I'm not going to say fun, but fun to talk about afterwards. And then, you know, also working with a loved one, working with a spouse, working with a fiance. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for Absolutely. having us. Wow, y'all weren't kidding. It's like the energy level is here. This like, oh, started. <laughs> Hi. Hi, the camera's on. It's not that bad. I know. I told you I turned into a different person once the camera's on. There she on. is. There she is. So uh, first of all, you know, again, thank you so much for coming in. Um, and, you know, because we were first talking about the whole murder in the rental, I don't even know how to react or even ask a question on that. What is that like? Is it you, the police call and say, hey, by the way, you're, you're the owner of 123 Main Street. Somebody's dead over here. No, that's not how it happens at all. Okay. And the way it happens is the property manager is watching TV and sees it on TV on KSAT and calls and says, hey, I think somebody got killed in your house. Happy New Year. It's 1 a.m. That's how that happens. <laughs> so this happened like this year or last year? Last year. Okay. Yeah. So literally the property manager of one of your properties, and which is interesting, we just had a property manager on yesterday talking about situations like that, and here y'all are talking about it. So y'all have one, two, three Main Street, property manager calls, there's a dead person yeah. in your house. Dead guy, yeah. Police go through, do investigation, all this kind of stuff. Obviously the house is not going to have an occupant now, so after that you... Because uh, that's what's important. <laughs> Somebody's dead, no, 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 no. but I'm not going to get paid. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is we talk about eviction or clearing, right, that's right. not a case. So yeah, yeah. That doesn't exist. But yeah, you go through and patch up the bullet holes, repair it. Right. Um, you know. Now, you, now, on, but yeah. you may or may not know this, but like when something like when you have a violent death like that, do you have to disclose that? Because I know like if you're selling your house, <clears throat> there's some arguments to be made for and a for against and for a for whatever for or for against that. Uh, I just said it again that you have to disclose. But in a rental, I mean, is that something you have to disclose? You know, not that I'm aware of. I mean, okay. in that neighborhood, it's happened in a lot of the houses. Okay. But <laughs> so it's kind of like it's expected. Yeah. yeah I mean, not yeah, not that we've been advised or aware of. Yeah. So. Right. So, and then in, in a situation like that, is the property manager taking the reins on most of it? Or is it like, hey, I got to do my, my side? Of this? You know, you're going to communicate with the authorities and some family members and, you know, give us an interview and such. But beyond that, there's a lot less involved than you would expect, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I would assume at some point if the property sold, there's going to be a disclosure situation. But, right. But beyond that. But I mean, uh, if you have a, a rental, I mean, other than if there's a highly appreciating area, you're probably not going to sell it, right? That's right. <laughs> you're like, why would I sell it? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so it sounds like it's just like it's just a daily occurrence. It's like it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. You move on. It's all good. Other than oh crap, somebody died in one of my houses. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sad, and that stuff happens all the time. Yeah. You know, the neighborhoods that we focus in, we see a lot of good people, really bad people. We see, you know, lots of drugs, um, violent crimes, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff exists. So we're in the middle of that stuff every day. And I'm not going to say we're hardened to it because it maybe makes us softer. You know, we talk with the families that are impacted by this or the neighbors, you know, maybe the house two doors down from our rental has, you know, lots of drug trafficking going on, cars in and out. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have to work with these people, connect with them, figure out how to make this neighborhood work as much as we can without being a problem there. Um, at the end of the day, it probably makes us better people, I think, you know, by being that connected to all walks of life. Right. And th there's two points I just want to quickly point out is like, one, you know, we always kind of somewhat goof on the <clears throat> HGTV shows just because it's like, oh, something bad's happened. It's like, really? Something bad happened? It's like, <laughs> yeah. somebody died in one of the houses. <laughs> but or, did you die? <laughs> yeah, but did you die? Or did yeah. you, one of your contractors murder somebody? Like, I mean, it's so, it, it, you know, the this is the real stuff that happens is if you have enough rentals and you have it long enough, you know, I'm not going to say something's bound to happen, but you know, you got to be prepared. That's right. So like, is there, is there preparation for that other than just like being, you know, Hey, life happens, shit happens, move on. Yeah. I mean, I guess you, you start, you become used to catching arrows mm -hmm. and you know, that's, that's kind of how it works. I won't say you're operating in crisis mode all the time, but you have a heightened sense of awareness and when we're looking at purchasing properties, we're dealing with tenants 
we were looking at a property yesterday before I talked to you on the phone and I joked and said, if I don't show up tomorrow, that means I got shot here. But the reality is I went to that home and there were people across the street that made me feel really uncomfortable. And a guy that came out of that property who's not an occupant also was a shifty character. So I didn't get out of the car. I looked at it from the outside, I rolled the window down and I left. Yeah, so we, you gotta have, you gotta operate like that and you gotta be prepared at all times. We, I've talked about that here before. Uh, Rob Barney, <clears throat> several months ago, he's a, a DHCL, a hard money lender here in, in Dallas. Yeah. And we were talking about how there's times to be fearful and there's times to like, you know, just go through that fear. Like it's one thing to be fearful about doing a deal because, oh, the numbers, I don't know, or pulling the trigger, but you know, there's another thing about being fear for your life. Physical threat is different. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Physical threat versus emotional, like, am I ready for this? Something else that a lot of people don't realize is two people, a lot of times that are walking the streets or in those neighborhoods, they're a little more fearful of you than you are of them. They're just trying to get on about their mm -hmm. stuff, but they might dress differently or talk differently than you or have a different level of education, but they're not bad people. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to discern the difference between somebody who is a legitimate threat and somebody who just looks different. And there is a real thing there. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because it segues <clears throat> into my, my second point where I was going to make is, is a lot of times communities are fearful of like investors. Oh, investors trying to steal my house. But most of the time, investors are coming in to clean up a neighborhood. Yeah. They're coming in to renovate. They're coming into that eyesore. I'm going to flip it yeah. to something better. Yeah. You know, instead of the squatters, you have maybe actual tenants that are paying and want to live there. We actually have a property like that where we came in and we like parked and I saw people coming in. I was like, what's going on? We went in there and it was like, honestly, like a house where people were in there doing drugs. So it was something that I feel like we were doing. It was good that we went in there because there were just people. It, the house was vacant. Mm -hmm. So we were going in there. We cleaned everything out. Now, you know, it's comfortable for the kids in that neighborhood to be able to, like, run around, be comfortable, that, you know, they're not going to have random people walking around. Because we pulled up, and there was some, like, random woman coming out of a car, like, saying she lost her phone, and she was not all there. So it's just like... Oh. Yeah, I, I recently, uh, a, a buddy of mine who has a house, like helping him wholesale property, and it was in the kind of a, a, a transitioning neighborhood. <laughs> and the neighbor's like, oh, no, you don't need a survey. I, I own this house. I own this house to all the buyers that go through. And they're like, we're telling the buyers, that's just the crazy neighbor. It's okay. Just look at the house. Look at the house. I don't know why I brought that up, but for some reason I thought about it. <laughs> you know, life goes on. Um, <laughs> one thing I did, I did think about, you know, going back to the murder aspect, not to just keep on going on, but it's just something I thought about, is what kind of financial impact does that have on you guys? Because, yes, you lose a tenant, and obviously human life is, is sucks, but, you know, we are in the business of making money from property. Like, what kind of timeline do you have to go through to legally – get somebody else in there. Yeah, there's a, there's a time period after, you know, they're gonna do some investigation and such. And, you know, we don't rush really anything. Um, mm -hmm. When we have an agreement to purchase a property, things can fall apart. So that's the one part of the deal that we rush, get it closed. But beyond that, we take it slow. When we get a tenant, we wanna choose the right tenant. When we're gonna do a remodel, we plan it well. We just, we're really methodical and we think through every option. So in that situation, it might stay vacant for a couple months, you know, maybe three or four months, or maybe longer than it really has to. Mm -hmm. But we will just want to get things done right, work through all the kinks, and then we'll get it back going. And I think the way we planned our business and structured it, we have the ability to have that flexible um, timeline. So mm -hmm. yeah. it works well in those situations, and it doesn't really impact us. You know, our return is not really it's hurt. As well. Yeah, and I do have a jokey, non-jokey, serious <clears throat> question that makes me look like an asshole for asking. <laughs> what about the security deposit? Do you get to keep that? I mean... If you committed suicide in the house or was murdered in the house. And again, I, I'm not an asshole, but I mean, is that because it's technically their money? I learned that yesterday with the property manager. It's their money that you're holding in, in escrow. Yeah. Does that mean it's like, well, there's blood everywhere, there's brain matter everywhere, so I get to keep the house or the deposit? Yeah, I mean, if there's a if there's a balance after doing repairs for whatever they may or may not have had to do, or if there's delinquent rent or anything, if there's a balance, you know, it'll go back to family. Um, mm -hmm. If there's not a balance, well, it goes into the fund. Right. If there's no family that claims it, it just kind of gets lost? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not an attorney, and I don't think you're an attorney, so <laughs> that's my disclosure for today. <laughs> I'm Ryan with Propelio, and I'm not an yeah. attorney. <laughs> So, so. <laughs> well, anyway, I think, you know, it, it sounds like at the end of the day, yeah, it's, it's very rare for that type of situation to happen, sure. but it does happen. And that's why we like to bring it up here just because 
you know, most people, they think HGTV, they think roses, they think, oh, I get a house, white picket fence, and I make $10 million on this $10,000 acquisition. Yeah, that's not how it happens. R right, right. <laughs> you know, you do have craziness. You do have situations yeah, yes. where, hey, I'm going to buy a house today, and then you're like, nope, I'm not even going to go talk to this guy. No. Yeah, I pulled up with all intentions. I'm, I think I want to buy that house based on location and size and the price. And mm -hmm. when I circled the block and talked to everybody, I said, I don't think I want to buy that house. So segueing into the next topic of, and th this is actually a good topic because uh, one of our frequent um, uh, watchers, Helen Sons, she was actually asking uh, before, hey, what about working with your spouse? So in that situation, if Lisette was with you, what, you know, she's got the big guns. Is she going to you know, protect you? Or are you going to look at the house still? Or are you still going to drive away? <laughs> no, I still go with him. I mean, we, it depends on the situation. If yeah. it's like, okay, Lizette, stay in the car. I stay in the car, but usually I'm not scared like unless I see one, speed unless dial. I see someone like looking at us. That, but other than that, it's just like, hi, how are you doing? In right. the beginning, I was, I wasn't even scared of them. I was more scared of like what to say. Right. Like they're gonna close the door on me. But usually once they Who open the, the door, is ever to close the door <laughs> on you. <laughs> no, but it's just it was more of that. It wasn't being like scared of the person. It was actually just getting scared, being like, get away from me, like get out of my house, get out of my property. And once I started realizing that that wasn't the case, it's mm -hmm. not the, the people that live in the houses don't scare me. They are, most of them are like the sweetest people ever. They'll like open the door, tell you everything. They tell you your life and you, I mean, I end up falling in love with them. I'm just like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. so. So one, one thing that's interesting because like, uh, uh, there's a local guy at DFW, he talks about door knocking with his work wives. You know, like, you know, so he has a different uh. work wife for, for when he goes door knocking because, you know, having a, a female with him door knocking is very is less threatening than just going yeah. solo. So in y'all's business, have you noticed that maybe when y'all go together to to uh, purchase house versus, you know, one of you going solo, is there a, you know, is there a, like, oh, I, you, baby, you need to come with me today or. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of times there's sometimes there are language barriers. We run into that. Sometimes there are personality differentials there. Um, and we try to assess that along the way. Sometimes there are time there are situations. We had a meeting yesterday where a deal has gone well mm -hmm. and it started to go a little sour and I wasn't really sure why. So we all came to the table and Lisette came as well. And she was the glue that, you know, the, I guess the touch of a woman that allowed mm -hmm. that bridge to be built again. Yeah. And it was just big guys, you know, we have our egos sometimes right. and we have to work to bury those, but we got too focused on things that were less yeah. important and she came in and put that back together. Yeah, I think sometimes you like lose focus yeah. of like, oh, it's a property, it's this and that, it's a house, it's a land. And then you don't realize that the person there's selling emotional. it to you, there's emotional attachment, <clears throat> they're sad, they feel a certain way, someone made them feel a way. And I mean, I get there and I'm like, no, that's not the way we want, want it want anyone to feel like you know we're here to help you you know get rid of those you know the taxes or anything like that so you can go with money mm -hmm. and not like feel like we're there to like take something from you so that's what you know her him and the son were talking I'm like you guys that stuff doesn't even matter anymore this woman is over here she's hurt she spoke Spanish and she was like I feel like no one's listening to me mm -hmm. and that's when I was like you know what guys it doesn't matter what does she want let's get her to feel comfortable to be able to go to sleep at night not being like what's going on so i gave her my number and i was like whenever right. you need anything just call me i'll get to logan just call me you know if you you're scared of anything i'll go with you to the title company i'll go with you to the lawyer's office be able to like you know walk with you through and she i think we walked out and then she felt so much better and mm -hmm. i felt better because i was like that's not how i want the seller to feel. I want them to feel comfortable. Yeah, and it's all about finding the yeah. pain and, and really, yeah. we talked about in the car right over here, yeah. you know, this business of investing and buying and selling houses and buying distressed and, and helping sellers, it's like if you're focused on the house, if you're focused yeah. on the, the contract, you're gonna, you're all, you're, you're focused on the wrong things. You need to find the, the motivations. Yeah. Like if they wanna sell their house but stay there for three months versus an investor who just wants to buy the house, kick you out. Well, right. the person that's going to let them stay there for three months is going to yeah. is going to win the deal, I should say. Uh, before we get going, I do want to say, you know, Helen, I know you're watching right now. So if you have questions, because you were the one that wanted to talk about, uh, you know, working with your spouse, here is your chance to drop all those questions. Um, for everybody else out there, uh, please like and share the video. Um, these guys flew in from San Antonio this morning to to be with us and hang out. So that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, you know, everything we do here is free, so we're trying to get this out to the, to the world, to the masses. 
Um, so like it, share it, comment. If you have questions or ideas, uh, if you want to do business with these guys, drop them in the comments and, and we'll let you know how you can do business with them later. Um, but you know, this is a conversational type thing we do here. Uh, obviously it's, it's live so we can, you know, interact with you at home. So Helen, if you have questions, if you don't have questions, I'll be like, really, Helen, come on now. You're the one that requested this. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so <clears throat> I had a, I put a thought in my head before I went on that, that tangent. And I think that thought ran away from me. <laughs> but your spouse. You're working. Yeah. I knew that aspect of it. <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's funny cause you were talking about the, the, the woman's touch per se. Uh, Jamie Woolley, she was in here um, maybe a week or two ago, and, and she came in. And she's been in the business for a year and a half, and like in 2017, bought 102 houses mm -hmm. because she had that woman's touch. She had that uh, I'm going to drive to different people's houses. I'm going to not drive. I mean, it's like like you said, you gave yeah. her your personal number. Call me if you need anything. Yeah. So, uh, what other aspects of your business have have you have you Logan? Have you learned that where Lisette came in and just kind of just you know, amplified everything and really just took everything and ran with it. Hmm. I know I mumble and ramble and <clears throat> ramble. So just there's your call, make a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would definitely say interacting with people. That's, that's been huge. I feel like my interpersonal skills are good, but you know, she just adds a totally different dynamic, which is a big deal. Um, you know, also too, when you're working kind of in your own head with your own stuff all the time, you just miss other perspectives and she'll come in sit down at the desk and say, well, what about this? And in my head, I'm like, leave me alone, I got this. Mm -hmm. But when you hear it two or three times, you say, okay, let me think about that, let me think about that. And you know, there's a lot to be said for the, the just, I guess the, what am I looking for? I guess the, this, the support, the additional thoughts, you know, that stuff, just, it, it makes a big difference at the end of the day because I can only think a certain way. Mm -hmm. And she thinks a totally different mm -hmm. way, but it helps, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'll go in and he'll, they'll say stuff or I'll see things you know, like little clues and we'll get in the car and I'll be like, hey, did you notice this and that? And he's like, I didn't even notice that. And I'm like, yeah, that's why this person's acting a certain way. You I know? have my tunnel vision. She has yeah. my peripheral. Yeah, like, I, like I see everything and then I'll tell him and he's like, oh, okay. So then when we go in, then we know like how to be able to talk to them to make them feel comfortable. And that's where I, that's where I, I like to go in and make yeah. the person feel comfortable rather than it's just a transaction here, sign it. Yeah, like it, it's just it, uh, go ahead. more personal. Yeah, and that's the thing, you, you touched on something that, that's going away from this spouse conversation, but it's like if you go into a, a potential deal, tunnel vision, you're going to miss things. Yeah. So if you know you're like that, have a partner that's going to be, you know, more wider vision. Uh, perfect example, uh, Trey and I, we went and looked at a house a week ago, two weeks ago, and we're, we're talking to the gentleman uh, who's wanting to sell the house, and he needs $100,000. And, I mean, we're talking, we want to offer like twenty five. You know, and, and like literally that's it, any, any investor is only going to offer 25. Yeah. And he's like, I need a hundred. I need a hundred. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I'm sorry, but it, we could try to think of other ways, creative strategies. Like, no, I need a hundred cash. Anyway, you get in the car and Trey's like, I mean, I don't know what's going on. I was like, well, he probably has medical bills. He's like, medical bills. What are you talking about? I was like, you didn't notice his big toe was missing. Yeah. And there was like a red bloody bandage there. He's like, no, I didn't see it. I was like, yeah. you know, I was like, I, I, and he's like, did you see like a, a medical bill somewhere? I was like, no, I'm just assuming that he has, I mean, he's missing a toe yeah. and it it's, looks pretty fresh. I mean, that's kind of a graphic story, but <laughs> going back to the point of, you know, open up your vision of field yeah. and, and look, look at things, look at different cues to, 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 to jump off of. Uh, real quick, Helen did have a quick question though. I'm talking about spouses. It's like, what if you're in the business and your spouse is not in the business? And, and you end up feeling like you're dragging them, kicking and screaming the whole way. Well, I mean, I feel like when I first started working with him, I wasn't like doing that. He asked me to come on, but I was always supportive. I was always like, you go do what you need to do. Like, you know, like a hundred percent, anything he said, I was like, okay. Like, you know, I, I, I saw his drive and I mean, that's one of the reasons I fell in love with him was his drive. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's different if someone, you know, goes into doing something like that differently. But I, that, that was the reason I mainly fell in love with him was the right. drive. The fact that I wanted to be a part of something like that. And I would see him, you know, spend endless nights just like looking up stuff, finding solutions for people, doing like things that I was like, oh, that's impossible. And then I would see it, 
And I mean, it's like having the, to me, it's like having the best teacher. Mm -hmm. I learned everything that I like know about any of this business through him. Sometimes I hear myself talking to sellers and I'm like, whoa, where did, where did, where did that come <laughs> from? I didn't even know I had that knowledge. And it's because it's already being put, I mean, that's what we're talking about at home. Right. My kids will like come home and like he'll go <laughs> with them and he'll be like, do you think this deal's gonna go through? Or he'll be like, mommy, you guys are cash buyers. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yes we are. Yeah. So it's it's just fun. And I mean, you know, there is times that you know, you, you get like, we need to do this, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. But he also tries to listen. I mean, sometimes like, I'm doing this and you know, you need a, there has to be time. Like you have to stop working at a certain time, unless it's a really good deal. <laughs> then you go, then we all go. Then we're like, let's get in the it's car. And, you know, affair. We'll get ice cream afterwards. <laughs> but we try to balance it. I've, I think I've helped him like, you know, be like, let's do more vacation. Like something like this mm -hmm. up to him. He would have, we would have flown into Dallas and flown out tonight. I'm like, you know what? My cut, my, like I have siblings that live here. Let's go visit them. Right. Let's take a break. You can still work, but it's like almost like a mini yeah. staycation. That's right. So we try to make it as fun as we can. I think. You know right. what I'll say to Helen's question? I'm just as purely for my side. So I don't know which side she, the fence she's on, but if you're starting a business, you're a business owner. If you're an entrepreneur or anything of that sort, you are very consumed with this. This is your baby. It's your life. It's your love. All those things. And if you don't have someone that at least supports it that's a big problem. And if you've got someone who's negative and you're having to drag them kicking and screaming, maybe you don't need them in their business, but they have to support what you're doing. If you have any negative flow, any, mm -hmm. any, uh, if you feel like you're swimming upstream, any of that stuff that gets in your way, you're going to resent them. You're going to dislike them. Yeah. And that's going to cause, or in my experience, it'll cause huge problems. Mm -hmm. So when you have that continuity, the support, it's so much better. So, so I wouldn't drag anybody to do anything right. they don't want to do. I would stop. I would cut the cord and stop dragging them. Right. And, and, and Helen, she, she's a big fan of the show. She, well, I'm assuming she's a fan. She watches all of <laughs> I hope you're a fan. I hope you can there you go, Helen. Fan. <laughs> it was a quick, real quick funny story is we actually uh, were giving books away at one time. And we gave her, uh, uh, without even reading it, we gave her a hardcore closer from uh, uh, Ryan Steumann. And she messages Daniel. She's like, this is a good book, but there sure are little F words. And we're like, oh. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> but it was the, funny, the cutest thing ever. But uh, but I think to her point is she she's the one that's all in, and maybe her husband, her spouse, is not the one that's you know I don't want to say supportive because I don't know the full story. But obviously, you know if you're all in and the other person is just kind of yeah. you know you he know. may not have to participate, but yeah. right. You know, if it's like consistent opposition, that's a that's gonna be a big problem for her. Right, I and, would think. and it's one thing we always tell people here is like you know if you don't have a supportive partner. This is an all-encompassing business. If you're going to make something like this work, it takes every bit of yeah. everything that you have and you ever will have to get it going. It has mm. to come from both sides, too. Like, it's not like, even if you don't work together, like, if one person has a job, another one, you know, does something different, you guys have to help each other out. Like, there's times, you know, that I'm doing things and Logan helps me out with things he doesn't even need to help me out with, like, watching the kids so I can go to the grocery mm. store by myself. Like, those mm -hmm. things are, like, help. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things like matter, you know, like all I need to go do something with my daughter and he'll take um, Rodriguito with him to go talk to a client to, at a Bill Miller's or something. And it's wow. just those little things help so much because I'm not over here like with two kids trying to like do things. It's just like we kind of like balance each other out. Yeah. And I don't want to go full on Oprah over here, but at the same <laughs> time, it, I think it is an interesting topic. And I'm, I'm glad Helen you know, brought it up for us to want to do this because pretty much everybody I know that is married in this business, usually it's a, it's a, uh, it's a partnered system, you know, it's a, and it, it either used to be a partner system or is in the process to be it or is currently it like uh, a buddy of mine, Jason, uh, Reine, you know, his, his wife ended up getting her license and now they're, they're a husband and wife team. Yeah. And anytime so, they're in the car and his kids are in the back, just all bounced around chirpy chirpy, there's a bike on the line. They know to, yeah and like and if there's uh, he's even got his kids to he's even got his kids trained to where if there's a friend of the kid in the car they're like Shh, that, daddy's that's daddy's money line you know, you know shut up the money line the money line you know that's money yeah. the bad phone so so in a way it is a family affair and I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the kid aspect yes. of it um I, I, there is a couple of people uh manny could never work with my husband we would kill each other well, 
Sorry. Don't do that. Uh, sorry. Uh, don't do that then. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you don't 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 get dead. You know, <laughs> don't get dead. Hashtag don't get dead. Um, Helen, as always, you know, love you. Uh, Eric, he was saying working with my spouse is an adventure every day. Uh, can we top the amount of cuss words from the day from before? That's fun. Uh, we compliment each other well. She has that touch, but as a former military and civilian police officer, she protects me. Hey, oh, nice. that's nice. the way you gotta go. Nice. I don't know Elizabeth, if I can do that. <laughs> working with better half, we compliment each other. Exactly, you gotta compliment yeah. each other. You know, and even just uh, the short time of hanging out with you guys, there there is that complimentation, if that's a word. It is now. <laughs> you know. So what? Speaking of roles, let's just get into the roles of it. What are y'all's roles in this partnership? Well, I mean, I kind of just let him drive the bus, <clears throat> and I just, whenever he needs me, I go in and help out. I mm -hmm. mean. It, I kind of just let him, he'll ask me for like a little bit of like, what should I do here and there? I'll say something, he'll sit on it and a few days later be like, I came up with an idea. I'm like, I sworn <laughs> I said that, but okay. Like, that sounds good. <laughs> I've done that in the work, work world. <laughs> you, you give an idea and then three, two months later the boss has the idea. Yeah, or he'll say it and I'm like, well, it must have been a good idea if he's bringing it up, but okay, I'll take You're it. You're like, I'll let him have it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, baby, that was a good idea. Great idea. So. I think it's important to know or understand that it, things change every single day, and mm -hmm. especially in the last year, the, our business has just exploded. So, you know, at times, you know, I hear, well, you told me this last week. Why do you change your mind? And that's frustrating for a lot of people. When I used to work with my brother in the energy business a long time ago, we were working out in the oil field. Him and a lot of other guys that work with me would get so mad. But you told me this last week. Change your mind. Well, that's what I do. I change my mind, and that's my responsibility, and i got to do it. So. Often that's happening and we're having to figure out how that works. And as it's happening, our roles in the business are continuing yeah. to change. My mom is retiring. She's mm -hmm. been an agent for as long as I can remember. She's moving down to San Antonio. She's gonna join the team. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna have you know yeah. a three person dynamic as well as the two guys that we have working. They're considered subcontractors, but they're working for us consistently. Mm -hmm. So that little group is, Right now, it's like a big ball of clay, and it's changing shapes quick. So, so we're having to juggle these balls that keep from hitting the ground. So you, you brought up the fact that you have family coming in to work with you. That's right. Can I ask maybe potentially an uncomfortable question? Mm -hmm. Who's in charge of the business? Is it 50-50, or is it him. you're in charge, you're <laughs> no, in charge? Oh, I mean, I, uh, And the reason I ask that is because you have to have that, that, that the captain of the ship. Right. Because, yes, yeah. you can have a 50-50 partnership with somebody, but... If there's a uh, if there's a time when there's a clash of opinions, if you're gonna have that stalemate unless you have somebody who is like, you know what, I respect that, but I'm in charge. I think we've got a really healthy balance, though. I mean, I think I have a lot of good ideas and directive between me and a mentor that I have, you know, and partner. We really we come up with the way the business has got to go. I do a lot of the execution, mm -hmm. um, and but I think we balance that out a lot really well. I mean, we've been thankful to not have a lot of disputes or arguments, and you know. Things change a lot. She has great advice and great input. So mm -hmm. I'm getting to the point now where I'm comfortable enough in myself to accept that. Right. Which is a challenge, yeah. you know, for a male, a business owner, all those things. But you know, when it's good stuff, who am I to say it's not gonna be good? And I think that's a that's actually a very good trait to have for a business owner or just an employee or any kind of work world is is we all we all like to think our ideas are the best ideas yeah. ever. Right. But if somebody else has another idea that may be better, <laughs> yeah. just be like, you know, that's that's a better idea. Let's go with it. And you know, like we always joke around here. It's like at the end of the day, no, we all have egos, but we don't have egos because it's like <clears> if something <throat> works, let's do it. Who cares? Yeah. It's, if it's gonna be successful, go for it. Sure. You know, like uh, I tell Travion all the time. He, he's a, our creative director. If y'all didn't know who Trey was, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, he'll he'll put out a product, and I'll be like. Well, I kind of like it this, this, this. He's like, but I like it this way. And I'm like, at the end of the day, you're the boss when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put your foot down, by all means, keep it that way. I'm giving you my opinion. And if you if you feel strongly in your opinion, go for it. Yeah. But if you don't feel strong in your opinion, go with my opinion. Yeah. You know, something that a lot of people don't realize is they see maybe entrepreneurs or company business owners or whatever, 
and they believe there's this misconception that that, that person is the end all be all. That mm. dude's the leader. That guy's the owner. That guy's everything. They don't realize he's got a board of directors right. that help him with a lot of things. They don't realize he's got you know or vice her. president, him, her, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there are all these people that are really helping him go. So he might be a figurehead or he might be the leader. But there are a lot of pe- a lot of orders that make that ship go forward. Right. And that's something when you move from that role of an employee somewhere to have your own shop, you've got to at some point understand that and be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're gonna have some tough times, I think. I think, well, I'm also learning. So it's like, I can't try to be like the boss, you know, when I'm still learning and stuff. And there's a lot of things that I have to be like, hey, how do we do this, this and this? So to me, it's a learning process. And I don't, I feel like I I let him do the deals. I mean, like you said, if I feel really strongly about something like this doesn't feel right, he, once in a while we'll be like, okay, and then he'll, he'll come back and be like, you know what, if you feel that way, you, you might be right. right. But I think he just, he's like, to me, he's like gold. Anything he's like, we're going <laughs> to do, I'm like, I don't know how you made that work, but it worked. I remember I told you I call him the title whisperer. <laughs> I'm like, every time I'm like, nope, it's not going to work. It's a good house, but it's not going to work. It just does. And I'm like, okay, I would, I would have given up like when I found out there was 10 people that needed to sign it over. We're not, now <laughs> now like, the, way, the way our business works now, unless they're three years, we don't even want the deal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, we want it dirty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag dirty title. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you were talking about learning so mm. much and, and, and learning so much from Logan because it looks like you got a shout out from Quentin Flores because he was saying, uh, you, know, you know, he was just saying that uh, – Without saying it, he's basically calling BS because he's saying that you've always had a, ki- a knack for real estate and, and going out there and kicking butt. You know, uh, what is it? Or did you sort of sway her into it? Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe he was asking. I, I misread it. Have you always had a knack or did you sway her into it? I've always liked real estate. Mm-hmm. There was always something that, like, inside of me, like, I always wanted to be a real estate agent. I was like, no, like, but it was that thing, that fear of getting the door closed on me when I would, if I knocked on a door. Now it's mm. like, no, it's not that hard. Like, it's really easy. If, you, if you're yourself, people will like you. When you're fake, that's when people are like, oh, they hey, can, they can see that. Hey, tell about Patrick dragging us in the bowl. You don't oh. have to whisper, you have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Whispering has no effect when there's a microphone. <laughs> oh, actually, um, we have a friend of ours named Patrick, and mm-hmm. he's in uh, real estate. So Patrick estate. Hammonds. Yeah. Shout is out a, Patrick. Yeah, he's a top <laughs> top performing agent under the Keller Williams umbrella in mm-hmm. San Antonio. So let me tag him. Patrick Hammonds, <laughs> thank you very much for this. Yeah. So he he did drag me to that class because he was like, Lizette, I need you to like call people. And I'm like, no, no, no. Only when you when you have them on the phone and you want me to translate. At first it was just when I tra- like to translate mm-hmm. Spanish. And then he was like, no, I want you to like do it and this and that. I remember going to the first class. He couldn't go because he had to go to the title company. I was so mad i was like trying to get the guts to walk out of that class because i was like no you know everyone's accountable for each other you're like in teams Mm -hmm. and i was like i'm not going to get any leads logan is like the one that gets all the leads i'm just the one that like translates i mean after i'm glad i did stay because after that logan's the pretty face (laughs) so he's just like i was in that class and it just like I got like a confidence and realized that there were so many people in that room that had the same fear as me, mm-hmm. but they were doing it and they were making a lot of money. And I was like, these are you top know? performing yeah. agents in our market, like platinum top 50, like mm-hmm. the guys of the highest production in our county. Yeah. And, and that Keller Williams office is the highest performing in the United States. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about, in my opinion, probably some of the best of the best. Yeah. And I started talking to some of them and I'm like, they're just like me. Yes. They're just, you know, being comfortable in themselves i'm like okay i'll do that too and i mean i think that that week i made one phone call and like it was to like a a person who was a lot that i was trying to get and that day she goes you know what um come by i think i'm gonna sell it to you i remember just getting off the phone call and running to logan be like oh my gosh i think i got that lot that you really wanted Mm -hmm. And I, we ended up closing, and yeah. I mean, it was like yeah. it was like the best feeling ever. After that, I was like, "All right, let's so do it." So, going at the Quentin's uh, uh, point, though, was it like did you have the bug before, or was that like once that happened, you were like, "Oh, okay, it's game on." No, I had the bug before. Okay, since a little girl. Because yeah. his his second part question was the fact of like you know he has a fiance and he's trying to like nudge. Now, I guess you could actually throw this back to Helen. But, We're hearing you know, this a lot, right? You know, yeah. How do you nudge your spouse, your partner, into this game? Because, again, it is all-encompassing. Like, I, I tell, you know, potential dating people, I told my current girlfriend first day, 
like, hey, you know, by the way, I work a lot, you know, so yeah. if, if we're on a date, I'm sorry if I pull my phone out. It's not you. It's work. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's, yeah, there is a lot of that nudging it into this 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 uh, sure. this business. But uh, I forgot. Just have her come was. on a double <laughs> date with us and I'll like make it exciting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Another Helen question. Not sure if, if you can answer this, but uh, what should you do and shouldn't do if one of you is an agent? And there's man, I cannot read like that. Sorry. <laughs> Are there some things that the non-agent should be doing uh, and the agent sh needs to be doing? Uh, just wondering what n uh, non-agents in the husband-wife team should be should do that the agents not to do. I'm really bad at grammar <laughs> and reading. I, th I think that basically the question is like, if one, one is an agent, one's not an agent, what are the roles, if y'all know the answer Well, this is interesting right now because Lissette is getting her license, right. so she'll I take the test. I finished my last class. That she did, 93 <laughs> on her <laughs> test. So she'll have her license in a few weeks or so. And I've, I had a license back in 06 or 07, and I let it go, and I just was an investor for myself. Mm -hmm. So you operate completely different. We're going to start to learn some of that. We have some friends that are investors and agents, and we've picked up a little from that. Mm -hmm. But I, I suspect there's going to be a little bit of extra disclosure we'll have to do right. just to be cautious. I think in the special, like, because what I know Jason and Teresa, what they do, and, and what I've seen other people do is, is in the disclosure, uh, you say one of the buying <coughs> yeah, is an saying, agent yeah. and is and is by no means in uh, representing the the seller. You know, something else you could think about is the way our and maybe unless we talk about this, no one realizes it, but the way our business model is set up is the acquisition side, there's really not going to be inter any intermediary work. It will be mm -hmm. done by a, our company, our LLC, um, and Lissette may not even, even be involved yeah. in those transactions. However, on the, on the if there's a disposition side, a sales side, if we list for somebody, that's more or less all Lissette. Yeah. So Yeah, I, I don't know. I think if, if, if it's in part of the company, I would just say, like, again, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> Just throwing that out there again, clearly, uh, is just throwing in the. I mean, it's easy addendum A or, or special provisions like, hey, one of the uh, the spouse of the buyer or one of the LLC pure people is an agent. We use a no custom way. contract, yeah. so we may end up just adding a paragraph in there. Oh, use it, what, what kind of contract do you use? Like a two page, three page? Or? So I've seen anywhere from one page. Actually, right. I sold a piece of ranch land on a notebook piece of paper before, <laughs> but. You know, then you got the trek. It's like thirteen to fourteen pages. Right. Ours is about eight pages, okay. but it includes provisions that are important to the type of deals we do. And they're just there's a lot of little caveats that you yeah. that an agent would always have to write in special right. provisions and clear an addendum. We have a checkbox. We have stuff for that already. Yeah, I've never I've never used the the quick close pages. I've always <coughs> used a trek a trek one to four until just, this last six months. We always did as well. You know, uh, what do you think? And then this is kind of going on a tangent, but it's always interesting to me. Different you sure. know things. Like, what are the advantages of using a custom contract? Is it, I mean, and also, what do you think some of the pitfalls and what are the risks? Here's why I like it. And there are a lot of things about our deals that are different. Often, almost every time we pay delinquent property taxes, we pay out liens and we pay mm -hmm. a portion to the seller. And clarifying all in a track contract, you got to check this box. You got to make a special provisions. Don't forget that. And the way the track contract is set up is where escrow fees split one way or the other. You know, there's just some details there, but we have it more or less aligned for us. You have a check menu and it makes it so much easier. But when we have special provisions for those kind of things, it also require, it reminds me to go through and explain those details to the seller. It's not necessarily listed on the track contract and we have to write a special provision. Mm -hmm. But on our contract, it reminds me to explain it in detail so they understand. We accept the stuff that's mm -hmm. commonplace. Mm -hmm. The sellers don't. And the more we communicate the details to them, the more comfortable they feel, the better the transaction works. And we set those expectations at the beginning. Um, so I think all those details in there are better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, you know, like a memorandum of title, you know, we file those in every single deal. You know, like I said, we don't want a deal unless there are probably three heirs or more. It's a, it's a, it's a headache. And as a result, um, you got one crazy cousin who wants to try to sell a house to somebody else while we're working through three months of legal issues on their behalf for free, no cost to them. Mm -hmm. But we've got to protect our position that way. Right. And the market's really, really strong. We have a lot of people out there operating. So. Um, you know, things like that are just included in there. And it's not necessarily something that you have to disclose to somebody. It's, just, it's okay. You have the right to do that. But we just let them know we're going to do this for this purpose. Mm -hmm. You ever heard this saying, locks keep honest people honest? 
<laughs> you know, we add those things in there to keep us all on the same page. So, so real quick, uh, for those of us who aren't actively real estating, what is a memorandum of contract? Basically, you're no, you're attaching a. I'm a law, I'm not a lawyer. Not, not a lawyer. Legal advice. Not lawyers. And we're not escrow agents <laughs> in title. <clears throat> but in layman's terms, you're notifying the public in the county records of an agreement with you and the seller, and that's it. And it attaches to the legal description and or the property owner's name. Mm -hmm. So if at any point a title agent, escrow agent, or an abstractus or whoever pulls or abstractor pulls a, a title report, they'll find this attached a legal description, and it, and it more or less functions like a lien. Mm -hmm. It notifies the title company of an existing contract, and they will not clear a title commitment to somebody else until it's resolved. Basically, a roadblock. Yeah, it's a roadblock. Yeah. It is. I mean, um, we've got deals that have taken a year to resolve, and mm -hmm. the way I learned that is I was looking. I actually. It sounds it's becoming commonplace now, but I was looking through some transactions on land and saw Lennar Homes, huge builder. They do that. So I got to reading through it. So what is this? Called our lawyer and he, said, and he told me. I said, well, that sounds like a great idea. And the more I talk to people, I learned they're co becoming yeah. commonplace. Mm -hmm. and, and again, uh, real quick point, the more you talk to people, always be networking, always be learning. There's so much to be learned uh, in this business. Um, on at breakfast, we were actually talking about a strategy that we're not going to get into, but I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> actually, Miranda, just to take two steps back, Miranda, uh, she did point out what I was trying to get to, which was uh, back to one's agent. The disclosure would say agent is related to managing member of selling or buying LLC. That's like the one line disclosure. Well, see, I think what it is it's i don't think i would be really listing our stuff really it would be more like when we go in because we mm -hmm. get leads and stuff when we go in and we we we're not going to buy their house it, so it's something that i can be like hey we can't buy your house but i'm an agent they already know they walk it's not like right. you know i'm lying to them i'll be like i'm an agent i can list your house for you they've already felt comfortable with me they know the process we've already done all the like homework that we needed to do on it so it's just being more like hey i'll list it for you you can either put it on the mls or not we can call our network call around see who's interested in this mm -hmm. area which you know he has a pretty big network we can call around and see hey does anybody want this and right. it's more it's you know I'll be able to represent them right. and also make sure that you know someone else isn't going to come in and try to weasel them or something maybe, like that. Maybe we don't have the opportunity to work with yeah. them and buy it, right. but our goal is still to get some kind of yeah. solution to these people. So we list it, make a couple thousand bucks, probably not going to change our life, yeah. but it allows that person to get a much better answer at the mm -hmm. end of the day and we still gave them a solution. We didn't get to buy it, but they logged into our website, yeah. they came and talked to us and we gave them what they needed. Mm -hmm. That's. A big I mean, it value takes a, a, add. Yeah, a yeah. lot of them, it takes a lot of guts, you know, like they call you and they come in. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, no, 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 I don't want you. You're like, no, no, we're going to come over. They're embarrassed. You know, they're embarrassed of their situation. So when you, they've already opened their doors to you. It kind of, sometimes it, it, it hurts to be like, sorry, mm -hmm. like it's not for us. Bye. You know, yeah. so now yeah. it's more of like, hey, but I can help you. Like, you know, let me list it for you. And yeah, I think ultimately, like when you come, when it types, uh, when you're thinking about disclosures or anything like that, you know, talk to a local attorney yeah. and get their input because uh, who am I? I'm just some talking head on the interwebs. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, looks like uh, a family is already jumping in for you. Uh, family coming into the business, be clear, mom can give advice, but Logan does business successfully so he can drive the train. <laughs> Was that mom? Mm -hmm. That's mom. Hey, that, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> it's funny. My mom watches every once in a while. It's actually an ongoing joke because, <clears> like, uh, uh, like Jawad, will, one of our guys uh, that watches a lot, he'll pop in and be like, hey, mom. And he'll be like, hey, hey, Ryan's mom. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> she deserves a lot of credibility here. She's been peppering this real estate thing mm -hmm. over us her whole life, and it just so happened that we listened and mm -hmm. the seed took, I guess. So oh, cool. it's great to have that bond with her because we can always – you know. yeah. So let's get into the fun stuff. I know, I know we kind of, uh, uh, we talked about murder, we talked about spouse, and uh, you know, we got a little Oprah-E. E. Is, is that Oprah-E in oh. there? Um, <laughs> we won't get the big O, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, <Ooh>. so, so <laughs> didn't, not that O. Um, anyway, so let's, we're gonna talk about like the successes, the failures, the things that surprised you, the, all this, like the real estate stuff you would talk about in a real estate uh, networking event. So let's talk about success. Like, first of all, what is success to you? Well, we had an amazing year last year. Like, last year just was like, I mean, it couldn't have gone any better. I think we both started off the year pretty, like, very positive. Mm -hmm. Very, very positive. We both had, like, our little apartments. 
just positive, very happy. And then, I mean, we ended the year with like a brand new home that we're about to remodel and just, you know, engaged and like all these things that it just, I mean, the business, it's just like, when you think it's like, oh, we're not going to get a deal, it just keeps coming in. And it's just like, we're doing something right. And it, it feels good. It feels really good. You know, both of us have come from very modest spending, humble, cautious, you know, background. So I've got to say that's really important. And let me tell you the story on the house before we go off. Yeah. Someone thinking we ripped a monster check for it because that's not how it went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was probably the coolest 1031 exchange yeah. mm -hmm. um, that I've ever seen. We'll get into it. So Let's hear it. back in two th maybe three years ago, I started buying some lots on the east side of uh, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Not very val valuable. You know, people would give these things away. You know, five, ten grand. Um, some of them up to fifteen. So. After I had some money saved, after working out in the oil field, I started buying those things. Um, the lots? But, yeah, the vacant yeah. lots. So I guess this was 2014, so four years ago. Um, so we sat on them, things have been changing, appreciating, new homes have been growing, and I had a few of them in an area that was just as prime as you can more or less get in the area. Um, and we've been looking for a house, we knew the time was coming, and you know we're in this mindset of we have to get a deal, that's what we do, you know? But in the neighborhoods you may want to live in, it's tough to get a deal because the, the level of distress right. that yeah. you're, you're accustomed to doesn't exist. So we had a deal that fell through. So I'm just frustrated. I'm like, forget it. So I get in the car. I'm going to drive for dollars. I'm going to look for tall grass and boarded up windows. Well, I don't see any boarded up windows in this neighborhood, but I see some really tall grass. So I, there's a guy cutting the grass. Um, there's a lockbox on it. So I call him. Long story short, lady went to a nursing home, and we had a conversation with her agent who's about to list it. So I go in and make a cash offer. And it was the property was assessed at about 308 at the time. Mm -hmm. We had a 260 offer, cash closed in 10 days. And then I came back home. I was like, "Hey, what's that?" Came back to our apartment. I was like, uh, "We got a, got a house under contract. We got to figure out how to close it. Mm -hmm. Are we going to drain the operating account, or what are we going to do? We got 10 days to figure it out." Mm -hmm. Oh crap! So I realized these lots have been sitting here. They're ripe. And keep in mind, I got about 40 grand into all four of these. Yeah, maybe 50. Mm -hmm. I get on the phone and call all the builders in about a 10 block radius, tell them I want to sell this. And they're oh my gosh, you've been looking at those lots, you don't know who owned them. You want them, you have to buy them cash, you have to close in three days, they're clear, no debts, no liens, no encumbrances. Let me know if you want it. Sold all four of them for 260. <laughs> exchange ten, three of them in a 1031 exchange into the house, pay tax on the fourth because you can only exchange three properties, and more or less roll the $50,000 worth of lots into the $308,000 house all in 10 days. And it was a, and that, so it was investment property. So we said, okay, we're gonna resell this thing. Mm -hmm. So it was a light kind, we exchange, um, investment property for investment property. And then after about, I don't know, six or eight months, we said, you know what? This needs to be our house. Let's just live in here. Right. That's how we got our house. Mm -hmm. So we got $50,000 for a, I mean, a house that's worth, I don't so know, when you, when, you, when you bought the house to begin with, were you buying it specifically to possibly live in, <clears throat> live in it? I didn't really know. I mean, we looked at that and we said, well, we want a house to live in, but again, when it's a deal, you know, we've been living in this apartment forever. It's hard to pass up the next deal. You're gonna sell it, you're gonna make some money, you're gonna move to the next one, you're gonna roll the money. Mm -hmm. And the intent was for it to be an investment. And then it turned out, we converted it into a personal asset, mm -hmm. moved in. Yeah, and it's interesting though. It's like so you had the lots. That goes back to the whole. I changed my mind. <laughs> That's what yeah, we do. but it's interesting. Though, it's like you bought the lots to begin with, and a lot of times, a lot of people preach about how you know always have an exit strategy <clears throat> lined up. But if you're buying a lot for that cheap, and you know it's going to appreciate, you believe it's going to appreciate. Well, you hope. Yeah. You know, let's be clear. You know, market's going here. I mean, look at all those Bitcoin guys. <laughs> oh, it can only, it's going to hit a million dollars for the end of the year. It's like, where's that today? Um, anyway, right. but it's like you hope, you hope, you hope. But then, but we also talk about get creative, get creative. And it's like, okay, I want to buy this house cash. You know, I I want to live in it, so therefore, hard money doesn't make sense. And then, oh, by the way, I have these lots. And then, I mean, where where does your how do you go to the ten thirty one exchange and do this? Is just you have an accounting background? Do you have an accountant on your team to say, hey, let's do that, or is it just like, oh yeah, this makes sense? He's the biggest saver I've ever met. <laughs> that that's, that's helpful, right. yeah. So people talk about all those kind of things. We've been to a uh, you know some seminars on that a few times and never really applied it. But one of the portfolios I have, I share it, and that guy is an accountant. So mm -hmm. um, that, that that stuff's all kind of in our daily conversations and you know we do exchanges on the investment properties and that we share and mm -hmm. when this came up it just it's part of 
You know, I said we just walk through things slowly and think of all the options, five different, ten different options. They're all stupid, but the tenth one's the good one. You just work, yeah. think about all, every option, and that's where we landed on that Yeah, one. but, you know, I, I hear, I will take it slowly, but you just said, hey, can you close in three days? Yeah, that was you know, like, most, most so what say, I said most is, people I, would call BS and like, so what I said days. is, I close the deal really quickly to <laughs> capture the deal, but they have to real slow. So we had to run through all that stuff in a shorter amount of time. That's right. right, right, right. But I realized there was a lot on the table, and it was an a-, a house that we really, really liked for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. There, I mean, nothing's absolute. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it felt good at the end of the day because he's, like, the biggest believer in, like, cash. Right. Cash is king. Like, you know, you save up and you buy what you need. You don't buy things under credit. So it was good to, like, go to sleep at night and be like, this house is paid for. Like no. Let me let me say it this now. way: If the whole market crashed yeah. and I le- realized that all the stuff that I thought was good in real estate isn't sustainable, and I'm terrible at this, right. I can go work at Jack in the Box and pay our property taxes, mm-hmm. and we'll always have a nice house. To I, live, I, to I was dead. just I was just going to yeah. point that out about how if the market completely tanks, mm-hmm. you know, if it does, oh, it's never going to tank. It's always going to go up. Whatever, um, you know. <clears> at right. the end of the day, is like, say God forbid, something really bad mm-hmm. happens where you're not able to continually do the business. Yeah. You still got a house that yeah. you paid cash for. You, yeah. There's no debt except for property taxes. Or if we really need to start awesome. another business, we dump the thing, make some money, live in a small house. Now we just raised some good capital, start another business. Right, because you locked in got options. 50-ish, 50 in equity. 320. Oh, I thought you said it was 308. Huh, 320. Oh, 308, 308, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what you, anyway, what, it, yeah, yeah. Tomato, <laughs> tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But there's a huge amount of equity there. Yeah, yeah. And, and you paid cash. So do, are you paying cash in all of your business? Or are you using creative financing? Like, because, I mean, you just said about how Logan likes to pay cash for everything yeah. and he wants to penny pinch everything. Are yeah. you using creative financing or did you you save the money from the oil fields yeah. and you use that cash to do your deals? Yeah, pretty much everything is cash. Um, mm-hmm. There are times there's a commercial line of credit that exists at a tiny amount of interest. And at times, if we say, man, there's a ton of outstanding commitments out there, and we might need to exercise that line, you know, if you're paying three or four percent, that's more or less meaningless when you have a reasonable margin. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you have the ability to exercise that if you want, but the majority of everything we do is just cash. And, and, and from a competition standpoint, I know utilizing private capital versus somebody trying to buy a property with hard money, private capital guys can be like, that's a quick phone call, you wanna do it? Yes or no, cool, right. let's go. Mm-hmm. Hard money guys can be like, well, I need an application fee. I need a survey. I need True. this. But then, if this you're is the to- guy, this is even different than all of that. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you're if you're the guy with and yeah. you got cash in your pocket, you're yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you know. So there's a different level. We can say things that other people can't say, and right. we can tell them that other people are going to say things that they're saying, and we tell them why they're not. They're well, not true. One of the things that that's Dan- competitive advantage. One of the things that Daniel does, and and. Um, this may be giving away a trade secret, but you know we're not really marketing, so it's all good. What he'll do is be like, "Hey, Logan, or, or you know, Tom Seller. Um, okay, I know Logan promised you X. Oh, you log in your bank account phone. We do that too. Has, yeah. has he done this? Has oh, he shown that, you? My, he does that all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, you show your bank yeah. account. Yeah, if, if we have the full trust and all that's there, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. If there's any reason that I think that's going to push us over the line, I'll do that. And then the next step is I'll say. But we need to talk to the title company to make sure this works. So you get them off from the title company to talking to a professional. Um, sometimes you grab one of the title lawyers and say, look, these are the facts surrounding the situation. Do you believe we can close it in the four days that we promised? Mm-hmm. You know, all this things. Should I bring a, a cashier's checker this afternoon? How do you want me to write the contract? So when they hear the title company on the phone and you're mm-hmm. showing them the cash, there's a level of comfort there that 95% of the other people just can't deliver because of circumstances. What other, so that's, that's why what other get, good tips can we get out of you? Oh, man. Trade secrets, baby. You need to come down to San Antonio and work with us one week. <laughs> well, he saved a lot of his money working in the oil field. Right. He was like living, what were you living off of? Uh, so I'd live off my per diem card, which was a, I don't remember the amount, but it was not like 30000 a year, which covered like travel and food and whatnot. Uh-huh. So that was my expenses. I stayed in a little RV or corporate apartment, depending on where I was at. And after taxes, I would basically save the paycheck for yeah, yeah so basically be frugal because like i know a lot of people who get this business <coughs> there are a lot of traveling salesmen that are like oh real estate will change your life and it will change your life but yeah. it's also still a job you're still yeah. working 80 100 hours a week and you do get a checks for twenty thousand fifty thousand hundred thousand whatever that does happen sure. but if it's not when you see somebody on facebook oh i just made 80 grand it's like that you don't know what expenses yeah. you don't know right. what they've already I mean, if it was a $65,000 rehab, guess what? They only made 10, 15 on yeah. that. 
Right. So, you know, the big checks are great and all, but is it really true? Yeah. Um, but, you know, you got to be frugal and you got to, you know. I think our, I think the thing that helped us is living far below our means. Right. I mean, you know, America does not understand that. You know, we have a culture that supports something different than that. Mm -hmm. And it started out being based off fear. Am I going to be able to support myself forever? You know, am I capable of this on my own? So you just start hoarding money. And right. then later on, you realize, holy cow, I can do this. Now I have some firepower, and that really gets, that allows you to get going. But as long as you maintain that mindset, you have a lot more stability forever. I do have a random tip for everybody watching, because uh, we were talking about this morning. You know, if you go to a local meetup, you go to a RIA, you go to a networking event <coughs> with other investors, you know, the, the people, the guys that are wearing the three-piece suits, maybe they're successful maybe they look like they're successful find the guy that has the shitty ass hat the the shitty ass board shorts and the and the shirt with three holes in it or something. that's yeah. that, those are your real investors. The american flag board shorts those <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> guilty yeah yeah nice those, those are the people that are doing the deals so if you're at a networking event you know and you see somebody who doesn't belong it, that's probably the guy you, or the gal that you need to be talking to so that's, that's just a random tip. Um, other than your personal residence, what other like just what's the most surprising, crazy, successful thing that's ever happened to you? Hmm. Oh, the craziest place we've ever done a deal. Sure. Walmart bathroom stall. Oh, yeah, Three dudes. True. That sounds crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know right. if I want to get into that. <laughs> Yo, you want to get, you want to be in that. Three dudes. You want to be in that. This is what happened. Um, so I'm working with a guy that I've known for 10 years. He's been out looking for houses. He found the deal that seemed Sorry. good. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is going everywhere except real estate. <laughs> You're like, where is this going? I know. Oh, I'm thinking. Is anyway, sorry. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Thanks. So guy named Ryan that I'm working with, mentoring, um, calls me and says, I think I found the deal. been knocking on some doors. Mm -hmm. We go talk with the gentleman that owns the property. He says, yes, I'll sell it for, for this amount. So we write a contract. And I, it's owned by a trust. I'm looking up the legal description, all that online. I say, I need a copy of the trust document to make sure that you're the trustee. And he says, oh, my son is. Look, where's your son? Oh, he's in Houston. Oh, where in Houston is he? He's in a halfway house. Can we call him? Uh, you can call him, but you can't email him and you mm -hmm. cannot go visit him unless you've been vetted for prior two weeks before, whatever. So we got all these disasters here. Like, what are we gonna do? So, we, so Ryan gets his brother or no, his friend who lives in Houston, I email him the con no, I overnight him the contract, all original documents. He picks it up, goes and meets this guy in his weekly shopping trip where he's taken to Walmart in a van, meets him in the bathroom stall with Ryan's friend, gets him to sign the contract. And they're FaceTiming me from the bathroom saying, do we sign this? What about this? Clearing it all out. T guy takes the contract back, comes back, overnights it to us. And the worst part about it all, I get the thing, and we finally get the trust document that they lost from the lawyers, and guess who the trustee is? The 92-year-old man. <laughs> There's no reason for it. No. Oh, no, 85-year-old man, so we didn't have to do all that. He so could have signed it. But it wasn't like having to like slip the documents under the stalls or anything? They were just in the bathroom or something? No, they were in the stall, huddled up together <laughs> in the pooper. Oh, because they didn't want to Because that guy was not allowed to have communication or talk with anybody unless he'd been pre-approved by his officers. <laughs> I was thinking that they're like, in, in like there's three stalls, they're like, like slipping the documents under the stalls. and So yours is way worse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three guys all like bunched up, writing on the thing. It's funny though. So, I mean, So that was a wild start to it. It got even crazier. At the end of the day, the, the seller, the older guy, he's 85 years old. He didn't want the tax implications, mm -hmm. so we wanted another rent house because this one wasn't habitable. So we had to track down a house from a local wholesaler that was immediately available, buy it, do a swap. Title company was up in arms on this deal. We had to figure that out, get the swap done, and then the house, the foundation was broken in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the worst foundations yeah, I've seen. So we have to level the foundation, get it signed off, get an engineering report, and finally get the whole deal sealed out. It was, it was a heck of a deal. That was one of the toughest ones. Yeah, for I sure. mean, just that, but you know, talking about getting a contract signed, you know, and, and having, I, I don't want to use the word audacity, but it, it's the one thing I can think of. Just the, the thought process. Yeah, well, get, do whatever you got to do. You know, it goes back to in real estate, there are some craziness aspects, and you, you literally just have to do what you got to do to get the, the deal done. Um, so if you're watching, uh, where's the craziest place you've ever got a contract signed? Um, you know, I. I've got nothing. I've got nothing on that, you know? 
You know, it's just I, I know Jawad or Corey. They who they watch the show a lot. Yeah. They probably have some crazy stories. Daniel, where's the craziest uh, place you've had a contract signed? I mean, I, I I really feel so vanilla at this moment <laughs> time. You know, Starbucks. That's I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. you know, McDonald's, no. yeah. Taqueria. Mm. You know, but like the bathroom stall of a Walmart, just because you're trying to be all hidden, that's pretty epic. And you're being FaceTimed. Yeah. It's kind of hard to top that story. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> so that, that, was a, that was probably one of the toughest contracts we had to get done in one of the mm-hmm. craziest locations. But we weren't going to be able to get things done for the seller. He wanted out of that property as a time suck, a money suck. It was mm-hmm. not habitable. His property taxes were going through yeah. the roof. And he wanted some income. He's an older guy, can't work anymore. And that's what it took to give him what he wanted. So curveball on that story, you know, because I know sometimes it's it, the <clears throat> investors. Um, wow. Yeah. Dan, no, I was going to say Daniel's comment. His was on a feces covered kitchen counter. <laughs> that's, that's his craziest oh. uh, place to sign yeah, a contract. Well. You got me there. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a counter that didn't have. That's no, a lot. Of, we didn't. Yeah. Didn't We've seen that. some crazy houses I don't know if we signed stuff on we just had to sell a house that had 30 poops in a toilet yeah, that and a was, bathtub that was bad. <laughs> yeah that was bad so so my train of thought I was going for before uh I saw where all this nastiness the, before, started happening yeah. <laughs> anytime feces comes involved my brain goes uh, uh, you know when I was talking about real estate investors it's, it's time and money and it's like sure you don't want to you never want to throw away a deal but at the same time if a deal is going to take two years and the outcome is, you know, eight grand, Cut is that rate. a good utilization of your time? Right. Yeah. Versus if it's gonna take two years and it's a two million dollar deal. Yeah. Sure. Hell yeah. That's a lot of money. So on, on mm-hmm. a deal like that, uh, do you go into it or having that thought process or is it just like, you know what, there's still enough money in it, still enough money in it to do it and, and or is it almost like an afterthought of yeah, okay, we, we did okay on this, or is it, man, we wasted a lot of time? No, that was a slugger. That was okay. a home run out of the park. And from the, the beginning, the, the numbers, I understood what they were. I know the neighborhood block by block on the comps. When they told me the address and the basics, I said, we're going to do this. He's mm-hmm. like, what if we have to do this? We're going to do this. And, and we and, did everything it took to get it done because it was, we knew it was going to be And, and you know, in this concept, uh, we were talking to Larry Higgins out of Houston. He does uh, uh, Skip Genie, which is a, uh, um, a skip tracing software and or service. What we come up with there, when we were talking about it, is like usually the, the deals that are hardest to do are the ones that have the biggest payoffs. That's our models evolved so much in the last six months. We're doing the dirtiest of the dirty. Yeah. There are properties that are on in the neighborhood that everybody knows. That's the house that nobody can get. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows about that property. And we post a picture of it in front of it that we got it. And everyone's like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's what we're starting to do mm-hmm. because that's what we're good at. And you got, you got to walk it. through the muck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, figuratively, <laughs> unless you're Daniel, then you you actually do it. Uh, <laughs> well, what about what's the most surprising thing in this business? Because I know <clears throat> you were talking about how uh, your your story you 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 had a little fun, then you got into then you worked your ass off in the oil fields, and then you got into real estate, and then you met lovely Lisette. Like, what is the most surprising aspect of this business? And 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 get, get, feel free to get a little rah rah here. Hashtag rah rah Ryan, yeah, but, uh, you know, you know, feel free to like get a little rah rah to to motivate people that are, I kind of wanted this business and and like maybe I'm not there yet. Like, what other than being able to afford to uh, buy a, a home for cash that, you know, sure. I'm, my brain, I'm, I know what I'm trying to ask. I think I asked it, but I, I don't know if I, it, right? I verbalize it in human language. I mean, language. he talks about it yeah. all the time. We're very like we're very appreciative of like. Our lifestyle. I'll say I never ever expected things to work like they did. Mm-hmm. And every day I wake up and I'm just I remind yeah. Lisette and the kids, I'm like, wow, this is this is amazing. We worked really we work really hard. We continue to do it. Uh, we have good advice from really smart people. You know, either a partner or a mentor or somebody that keeps us on the straight and narrow. Um, so every single day, we're just so thankful that all this stuff can happen. I would have never expected it. Now, there are a lot of, don't get me wrong, there are some super failures. You know, mm-hmm. I did a flip, it was a half a million dollar flip, and I lost 50 grand. Mm-hmm. That was a total disaster. So those kind of things happen. We'll talk about that here in a second. <laughs> Great. Let's <laughs> we'll scratch, that. We let's scratch, let's, let's scratch <laughs> that wound off. But that'll be a really good thing. That'll be a great time to talk about your first loss is your best loss. And it's a mm-hmm. huge lesson that my mentor told me, and I didn't understand it until I had to make a $30,000 loss, a $50,000 loss. 
and first now I understand First loss is the best loss? Your first loss is your best loss. Now, what does that mean? So what that means is the moment you realize, the moment you recognize there's a loss, the sooner you realize it, the better off you are. Right. You know, the longer you, your carrying costs grow, the market can change, your construction costs could go up. Um, all these factors in, impact your net. So sometimes someone buys a house and they realize they paid too much at the beginning. So you've already realized it. You've already recognized it. Mm -hmm. If you sell that house right now and take your ten or $20,000 loss and you're out, you're a lot safer. If you're going to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to build my way and remodel my way out of that, you might end up losing 50. Right. Now, in our case, it didn't quite work like that. Um, construction costs went much higher. I paid a little too much for the house. I didn't realize it back then. Um, timeline was longer. And at the end, we had somebody who wanted to buy the house, and I would have only lost 30. And my mentor kept saying, you know what, take it and run, go. And because we were coming into the selling season, and I had some really good feedback from some showings lately, I was like, no, 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 we need to hold out because we think we can get a little extra and they'll cut our losses. At the end of the day, I held another two months, lost another 20 grand because I had to discount it more. Mm -hmm. So, so on that, you know, I think I think the saying that we always hear around here is like, you know, don't keep throwing good money at a bad same. well or so. I forgot. What the don't throw good good money after bad money. That is th bad, good money after bad money. But I think the hardest part is rec like you said, recognizing <coughs> that it's going to be a loss. So, in your experience, how do you recognize that? I mean, because we're all. I mean, it changes the way I look at deals now. Mm -hmm. If a deal is anywhere close to tight, I don't want it. I'm not going to come close to it. If I have enough margin of safety in there that I can count all the 10 things that could possibly go wrong and they can all go wrong and I can still not lose money because that's your first rule, then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh my gosh, well, you're not going to touch a deal unless it's really sweet. Yeah. Well, that's right. And we have the same mentality here. Uh, yeah. not, maybe not so much Propelio, but just like house buying on the side is, yeah. is you know, we our rule, not rule, but our, our preference is that 75% minus repairs. And people always ask, well, how did you come up with 75%? It's like, well, in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, that's just kind of where it is right now. Yeah. Like 10 years ago, you would try to buy at 65% minus repairs. Uh, San Antonio, I have no clue what that market is, what, what the general consensus is. I mean, in, in Dallas, are people buying at 80, 82, 88%? Absolutely. Probably. But for me and my risk tolerance, you know, that's too high for me. I want a deal and 75% and lower, that's a better deal. I think you said it. There are a lot of people that are willing to do a deal that looks different than one willing, we're willing to do. And there's some people that maybe want it even better. But I think we're at a place where we're operating that we're safe. We can yeah. still give people the money they need to make the thing work. And if the market takes a dive or if we misjudged it or something goes wrong, we don't have to worry about those yeah. problems that we did mm -hmm. have to worry about. Yeah. It's kind of like Vegas, how we knew when to stop. Like, we're just like, we pulled <laughs> off. Like, we're like, okay, got the money, Slow let's down. go. I think it's the same way. It's just like, my, we this, this, this guy's like, my itches. I'm gonna get my crack itches, you know? Is that what they do when you when you got a, when you got a, um, like a, an addiction problem? Dave, Ch <laughs> Dave Chappelle's character, yeah. what was his name? What was his name? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Somebody brought up Vegas and not knowing how to leave. <laughs> uh, if you know that story, just, you know, sad face for Ryan. Yeah, but both of us are like that. It's not one is like, come on, let's go. It's like, we were both like, all right, that's oh. good. We, we won. We don't need to keep playing that. Like, let's walk. Mm -hmm. Let's walk away with our money and everyone's happy. <laughs> I wish I had that mentality. Uh, you know, Dave, Daniel Trinidad, another uh, frequent watcher. Thanks for always watching, Daniel. Um, what market strategies have worked the best for you? Uh, what do you mean by that? What, what's the market strategies? I don't know. Daniel, what, what do you mean by market strategies? Uh, it might be. You're talking about marketing? Are you talking maybe, about maybe deal like structure? Deals? Um, well, I mean, if we, if we do it on marketing, um, our deals come from a lot of different places. And now that I would say our relationships have, are maturing um, and growing, I guess. Uh, we get calls from probate attorneys. We've built relationships with their um, people down at the uh, city offices call and say, this person's house is on the list for demo. Do you want to call them? We know that you'll, mm -hmm. if you can, you will salvage the situation. Um, you know, we've got two guys that are working with us right now, Ryan and Hector. Those guys are both really sharp, really hardworking, and they're more or less looking for deals only to do with us. So are they acquisition guys? Or are they kind of like, like mentees that you're training and then like... They're both, you know, they're both really good. They're both driven. They're mm -hmm. smart and they're hard workers. And I told them if they were willing to spend a lot of time on just my stuff, I would make it well worth their while. Mm -hmm. And they're happy and they're going at it. Yeah. So, so, the, so basically they're independent guys, but they're basically exclusively selling to you. 
That's right. Yeah. Cool. So we've got that. Um, I would still say bread and butter of our business is our own. Yeah. You know, we door knock. Door knocking. Um, you know, distress. You know, mm -hmm. delinquencies, whether it's taxes or mortgage yeah. or whatever. We go straight to the doors, walk the neighborhoods all Saturday long, sticking cards, just being there. I mean, we get deals from collecting rent. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. easiest deal I've ever yeah. done was we were collecting rent uh, at the beginning of January. And I saw a guy outside of the house, and he didn't look like he was one of the old tenants. And I walked in there and talked to him, and literally in five minutes, we had an agreement to contract with Drought Sound Company. It was he just hanging out the house, or yeah. was he next door? The or? house had been vacant for probably a few years, and I'd seen it because we've got the rental across the street. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hold of that guy. And I wrote his name down the week before. He's on my to-do list. And I saw a fairly nice car, a real clean-cut guy out there. And I thought, I know he doesn't live here. Mm -hmm. That's the owner. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. So we went over there and started chatting with him. He's like, yeah, I was thinking about getting ready to sell it. And when I heard those words, it was like, game over, baby. <laughs> You're like, We're well, I was thinking about having this contract ready to go for the past well, six know, months. Let me tell right you. So we get to talking. I said, how much do you think you want for it? And he told me a number. And I said, well, how about if I get you money by Friday, which in three days, how about I give you this number? And he just stuck his hand out. I was like, hold on. Let me get a contract out of my car. <laughs> And he's like, so you do this a lot? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and I just made $2 million. <laughs> well, wasn't that sweet? <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> but it's been, a lot of our deals come from that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We now have people that, a family had a, a decent portfolio of property, but the father passed away and they just can't maintain it. And they started losing stuff to the sheriff's yeah. sale and foreclosure auction. We bought two or three of their vacant lots last year and they had some problems this year. And they said, hey, yeah. you did well for us and you, yeah, we're you, like, you did what you said you were going to do. Yeah, so our, like the relationships are ideas. starting to turn around now. Like now they're calling me for advice or, right. hey, can you help me do this and this? We might have some property that we might want to get rid of later on. Mm -hmm. I'm not pressuring them. I'm like, okay. It's more like they're calling me and they're like, hey, we need this, this, and this. I'm like, all right. And we helped them. Like, you know, she was about to get foreclosed on and or thought she was going to. And we actually put some stuff to the side and actually did our research, helped her out. And she was able to understand what was going on and not mm -hmm. have to spend money calling, you know, That's calling like around. That's get people to call exclusively to us because they know we're willing to deal with super dirty titles. Mm -hmm. And they call asking for that specifically. Hey, my cousin, blah, 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 read your post on Facebook. Here's what their problem. Mm -hmm. Some of our business comes yeah. from Facebook. We do more awareness. People don't really call us saying they saw our ad, but it helps with uh, awareness and mm -hmm. branding. Uh, earlier we were talking in the car about, you know, you half joked about you don't even look at a house if it's not 15 minutes within your house. <laughs> so are you mainly, you, you're super narrowed down into your marketing, you're super narrowed down into, you know, the exposure of, of who you are. You talk about going to collect rent. So yep. I'm, I'm assuming that you're very constant. tight and constant in your community right there. Yeah, we spent, um, so a few years ago, we were looking at deals all over Bear County. Mm -hmm. And I found I was spending 75% of my time figuring out if it was a deal or not, running the comps, looking at the neighborhood, going through all this junk. And you know, my mentor again said, Logan, stop going all over the place, stop looking at everything, kind of focus. What area do you know? I said, well, this area right here. He said, then do that. Mm -hmm. And it's 15 minutes from my house. It's all in the same area. And there are plenty of houses yeah. there. There's a huge amount of distress there. So it's mm -hmm. great. I can spend all afternoon in the neighborhood. You know, we got about three or four neighborhoods, but they're all near each other. Yeah. Now, are you doing lead lists at all? Or are you just, like, because you say you do a lot of door knocking, it's just like, that house looks like I need to buy it. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, happens, we drive around and see yeah. stuff. Wow, that one's vacant. I'm going to write yeah. down some vacants and look them up. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you've got the delinquencies. you got the delinquent tax list, delinquent mortgages. Mm -hmm. You know, those and are pretty good leads. Mm -hmm. And then it, when, as far as marketing, are you doing any kind of mail outs, any flyers or door hangers? We've done that stuff in the yeah. past. It, right now, it's a little thinner. We might ramp up some more of the mail outs mm -hmm. um, right now. Mm -hmm. But we don't do a huge amount of that. We've done the bandit signs. We've done a lot of that. But yeah. the reality is our, net, our relationship, our network, and our door knocking. Yeah. Has, yeah. Has face to face, result. I think, helps better when they see you. They see that it's a person. Right. And they connect. That it, That's easier than calling them on the phone and then be like, let me call you back. They're not, I mean, yeah, they're not going to call you back. And yeah. they know that. And they right. can feel that. And when they feel it, feel comfortable. Yeah. Now, and it's funny because earlier you were talking about how um, when you first started, you did a lot of handwritten notes. Yeah. And in my mind, that, I'm like, yeah, how that's are what I supposed did. to handwrite that's what a I thousand did. flyers <laughs> or a thousand letters? So that to me is extremely narrowed down marking. It's very, uh, I forget the word, direct. Uh, obviously, it's direct marking, but narrowed, uh, yeah. focused, or whatever that word is. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, uh, uh, but like, you know, because most people, like, if you're marketing, you just do this huge shotgun blast of just everybody, postcard. So, like, obviously with a handwritten note, 
yeah. you're probably a return rate on that is going to be a lot higher than a postcard. Yeah, we got, yeah. They were, it was a lot of work. It yeah. really was a lot of work. And at that time, we were trying everything to just see, we tried anything for two or three months and see if it worked. And if it worked, we'd just do more of it. And yeah. if it didn't work, we just stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. And that's why we wind up in the neighborhood knocking on doors all the time. Yeah. So let me ask you a question that I'm sure you get asked all the time, and we get asked all the time here. And to me, it's I think it's going to be one of my questions I ask every single day just because it annoys everybody all the time. But you have to, like, <laughs> smile and answer. Oh, gosh. How do I get started? Pull a delinquency list and go knock on doors. Mm-hmm. Now, you got to figure out how to structure a deal. Actually, that's too early. You shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. If I could go back and do all this stuff again, I had to learn a lot of stuff the hard way. Mm-hmm. Mom was a realtor. I picked up a lot of that stuff along the way. Um, I was a realtor early on for about a year and a half before I ever did my own deal. So I mm-hmm. got to understand the contractual process um, and the timeline and all that. That's important. you got to know that. You right. structure deal. If you could find someone who's smart and go work for them, yeah. be, I've become so much smarter by working with and under very, very smart people. Mm-hmm. I don't have to make a lot of the mistakes other people have. Right. So if you can find someone that's smart willing to take you on, yeah. go work for one of the wholesalers for six months. If you're sharp and paying yeah. attention, you know what you're doing in six months. Right. And then mm-hmm. go do that yourself. And, and I, I joke when I say it's annoying. It's not annoying. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always questions. It's like, you know, real estate is <laughs> always about networking yeah. and meeting people and, and, and trying to help people. So yeah. I'm playing. I'm not I'm, – it's just a, a frequent question you always get. So by all means, if you're local and you have questions, I'll, you, you can hit me up. And I'm sure if you're in San Antonio, hit you guys up too. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, I cut you off. You're about you're about to say something. I cut you off. Uh, what I was going to say is pick one of the big wholesale companies. Mm-hmm. Just pick one of them and go get a job. Work over six months. Right. Mm-hmm. They know what they're doing, and you will too. Yeah. And also, it's just the you know. Again, this is my opportunity to say, just you got to do the work. You got to do the work. Yeah. You got to do the moto route. Well, everybody wants kicking to watch those. YouTube. Me, Ty Lopez. You yeah. got to do the work. <laughs> Not everybody can do it. And get on and Zillow and and get <laughs> Zillow leads and and call them. Hey, I mean, if it works, it works. You yeah. know, just you know, know your numbers. Going back to what we talked about earlier this week. That's right. um, we talked about success. We talked about failure. What is the best lesson you've learned? Hmm. You can go Oprah again. I know. Ra- I'm trying. How, do you, how can I say Ryan and Oprah at the same time? Ropra? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would probably have to say two things. One of them, the two things that impact me the most, I think make the biggest impact on our business, is you have to remember this is a people business. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everybody says it's about real estate and all this stuff. It's really not. It really is about humans, mm-hmm. and it's about people, and it's about fixing their problems. And it just so happens that our solutions involve cash and real estate. Yeah. But once you understand humans, you understand how to find those types of humans, that's what it is. I mean, that's that, that's a, a huge, huge, huge yeah. thing. A huge thing mm-hmm. to us. Yeah. So, uh, it is. We're wrapping up here pretty soon, so if you have questions, if you have comments, drop them in below. Uh, you know, if I, I know Henry's asking, how do I get a, a you know attached with them? Uh, on this posting is their their Facebook page. If you want to check it out, go like, give it a like, give it a review. Oh, yeah. wow. there we go. We were talking about that before about how you know the easiest way to get reviews is ask your friends. Hey, can you review my page? That said, if you're watching this video, please review. Propelio and give us some some love, give us some stars. You know, don't don't be don't give us a, a star, give us five. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, if you need leads, if you need access to comps, uh, check out Propelio.com. Um, check out all the other videos we have. We do this for free. There's tons of content. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. Um, if you're watching right now, give them loves, give them shares, give them all the above. Um, as far as uh, getting a hold of you and doing business with you guys, uh, well, we have a web page um, on Facebook, Easy House Buyer San Antonio. We always answer like messages. Our numbers are on there, so you call us. If we don't answer, we always get back. So leave a message, and mm-hmm. we're always willing to help. And on, and I know that you you had a long list of of stuff to talk about. So here's I'm going to give back <laughs> your opportunity to cover some of the stuff that maybe I didn't uh, uh, give you a segue to get into. Oh, we were able to pretty much get everything in there. All the stuff that I thought made sense, yeah. There you go. That's great. Lisette, anything for you? No. That's fine. <laughs> a little, little scary in the beginning, but I'm okay. Still alive. Now. We're still good. <laughs> um, any parting thoughts, Trey, Daniel, everybody that's watching, thank you so much for watching. Uh, last word, anything? 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 
Um, Going once? Yeah, I got, got nothing, man. Uh, we, we said everything we need <laughs> yeah. in the last hour, so, so we, we are. We do appreciate the yeah. year. You know, we mm-hmm. feel just very thankful, and we're always you know, extremely humbled when we're contacted, you know, by somebody like you. Um, and that that just means that we're starting to do good, and yeah. we have good credibility. And yeah. I, I will say, so I appreciate that. You know, not not to you know not to be unhumble. Uh, can you please tell your story just a second ago that you were talking about the other day or oh, early this morning at breakfast? About what? About overhearing somebody uh, on their podcast. Oh. Because I think I, Daniel and Miranda yeah. and everybody oh, probably okay. love okay. this. I would, yeah. I was Give us in, the plug. Uh, okay. I was in class and I heard some guys listening to some podcasts and I'm really good at like remembering voices and I was talking to them at breakfast and I'm like, wait, I think they were listening to you. It's your voice. They were listening <laughs> to your podcast going into like the real estate classes. So I was like, I was like yes. Yeah. I was like, that's so cool though. Cause you know, we, we do this every day and it it, literally you're sitting here. There's the only person that's in here right now is, is Trey and, and maybe Daniel's here another day yeah. or whoever. So it's, we're just here. So it's kind of cool that there's, yeah. there's, there's people out there okay. listening. Yeah. It's watching. a good feeling when people know what you're doing. Exactly. Like, oh, okay. Right. Well again, up. Oh, oh, pitch the Rhea. Oh yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, February 26th. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got San Antonio people. Might as well talk about the event. <laughs> We're going to go. We'll yeah. be there. Be awesome. There. So February 26th, that's a Monday, uh, the San Antonio REI meetup. We'll be at the uh, Carver Cultural Center. Um, you know, why are we doing this? Uh, mainly because in the RIA meetup world, too often you go to these things and it's just sell, 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 pitch, 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 buy my product, do this, and you don't really learn anything. So we're like, we don't necessarily want to be a part of those anymore. Um, I, I'm not saying all of them are like that. There are some really good ones. Um, but we're like, you know what, we'll just do our own. And we'll invite some people we like to, to come speak with us and come teach. And so you can actually get real content. Hey, throw in an open bar, throw in some food, Ooh. have a good time. And, uh, you know, plenty of networking opportunities, plenty of time to learn, plenty of time to, to eat, drink, booze it up, have fun, be safe. And it's all for free. And that's uh, February 26th on a Monday. We're going to go. We'd love to see all you guys there. We've also spoken to a lot of people in our local market and um, a lot of people we really enjoy working with that are really credible and they're doing a lot of good stuff. They're also going to go, so I expect a great turnout. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, right now I've got about 250 registered. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my goal is to get that two to 300 mark. So if, if we got four to 600, that'd be cool. Ooh. You know, it's going to be a party. Yeah. So we'll see you there. I'll be there. Dan will be there. Trey will be there. Uh, again, I could ramble for hours, so I'll try not to do that. <laughs> but uh, see you on February 26th. Again, if you like this video, if you like what we're doing, please like it. Please share it. If you have any questions after we've wrapped up, please drop them in there. Uh, reach out to Logan Lissette. And uh, I'm Ryan, as always. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time.